Welcome back to Off The Burger. We're talking about whatever we want. And uh, off camera, Ed, you were telling us about your experience with, would you, would you say it's a cult? It's not or a it's cult. Like a it's a self-help seminar. Self seminar. You've seen. Well, a lot of cults can be there. Cults. Yeah, but they, they <laughs> I love the self-help world. Yeah, it's a self-help thing, you know, it's like a seminar style. There's like a bunch of people. Like a retreat too. Retreat style, retreat. style. it's a three-day okay. thing. But unlike cults, this self-help place is just like, hey, if you can get, the more friends you get in, the better. Yeah, the, <laughs> the more friends that yeah. pay, the better your progress that's is. That's exactly right. See, yeah, that's yeah. different than a cult. And you can make money. Recruiting your friends. See? Oh, I so didn't care that one. Not a cult. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you self-help your bank account while you're self-helping yourself. Yeah. Pretty good. It's true. They, they never really. Left. If you don't know what the product is, then you are the product. Mm. Yeah. Unlike a cult. <laughs> Let's be clear on that. Yeah. Yeah. Just not to be in any kind of trouble about it, but um, they. I was going through a tough time. Yeah. Um, I left LA. And uh, I went back home to work at my parents' store. Why did you leave LA in the first place? Were you already having a hard time in LA? Uh, my uh, dad had passed away. My mom was oh, at the store shit. by herself. Um, and my brother and sister already did their time there. And then it was just kind of falling on me. Like, oh. you know, it's your turn kind of deal. Yeah. I had to face that and just ultimately kind of went. But it was really depressing. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when I first got to LA, the thought was, if I have to, ever have to go back home, I, I'm a failure. I failed. It seems to be the common thought of a lot of yeah. transplants here. But you're like Jimmy Stewart at the old building and loan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was born here. I have family here. It's just, my mom's up there. Mm -hmm. So I was doing my duties as a son, I guess, um, to go up. And dealing with it was pretty rough the first month and two. And so signed up for these self-help classes and these seminars. Why did you do that one instead of like something like Gary V or like Tony Robbins or like something that's just like more known because a friend had actually invited me like mm. you guys said. Ah, yeah. Usually is a friend. And, uh, hey, uh, you look like you want to make full-time money. money on a part-time basis. Hey, do you like to make money or you don't like to make money? But, <laughs> well, the thing is it was a $200 class, right? And Actually, they never talked about anyone's finances or anything. It was literally- Oh, so it was more culty, like, you want to help yourself? Yeah, it was mm. behavioral health, yeah. like therapy, let's quote unquote that, whatever mm. it is. Um, changing your perspective and looking through your blind spots in your life. There's hella podcasts, by the way, on YouTube that you yeah. could have watched. For free. <laughs> yep. I had Very no true. idea and I had no answers, pretty much just kind of fucking signed up for this thing. Should have signed up for Money Masters. Maybe. A lot of people profited off of that yep. program, I'll have you know. While they helped themselves. Yep. And tantric experts, right? Tantric sex experts. And there was light cult stuff in there, very yeah, light. Very light. <laughs> like the cults. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, that's part of it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty much helping me get through like my resentment resentments in life in the first three days. So it was like a that, little bit yeah. helpful. So it was super yeah. helpful. I called family members and people I was angry at to just ask for forgiveness because oh. I hated them, yeah. you know? Yeah. Wait, you asked for forgiveness because you hate them? Well, obviously saying, hey, um, this event happened and I saw it this way and I know mm. you don't. And I'm I like, see. and I was the one that resented you and hated you over something like it was just wow. growing up that's pretty yeah. cool so know, it's man. offered a chance to 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 deal with some difficult a whole lot things yeah they, they teach you how to be weak so like, i would have been like i would have been like yo dog this is what you do you hate this motherfucker i'm gonna let you borrow my flamethrower and you go to their house and you fucking burn it down and then your problems burn away Thank you, that was $2,000. Bye. <laughs> There's definitely like a, a submission aspect to it. Because a lot of people go up there and they share about why they hate their family or their friends or some shit. Something happened to them. Don't you see? And then whoever's up there, the leader guy, kind of breaks that shit down on them. Just through the questions he asks. Kind of like, bitch, it's your perspective. It's a lot of Which that kind of training. it always is, man. It's how you tell your damn story in your own mind. So how many people were up there as you were there talking? Was like, there was about a... 150 people in that room. Whoa, that's a lot. Right. So, so they're like, it's your turn, Ed. 
Yeah. Come with us. Were you wearing a white robe and everything uh, and shit, and you had a fucking crown and? Uh, it's no. just regular shirts and jeans. Oh, and that's not a real cult, dude. No. <laughs> I wanted everybody to be in jumpsuits, yeah, what was the robes, or like I wanted to, like, yeah. look like a conference room, like a Tony Robbins yeah. kind like of. In a hotel kind of thing. Yeah, like just a conference room and. Was there like motivational quotes? Those always get me, dude. Oh. Like only you can change yourself. A mouse fell into a bucket of cream. <laughs> you're turning, you're turning, you're turning. I was that mouse. <laughs> they don't actually have any of that shit. No analogies, no metaphors. Wag, bro. Just want you to look at reality, kind of, okay. and like for life. So, un oh, no wonder they're not as successful as Tony Robbins. <laughs> so, where's the like culty kind of part? Or like, well, what ended up happening? Of, I see the aspect of. Um, how not they don't break you down they don't like tell you you're a piece of shit and in that kind of submission they really want you to think critically in your position in life so they help you they help you <laughs> before you explain this man it just sounds like dope ass people that are helping you work through your yeah. shit it yeah. sounds like and you're just like paying 200 it bucks for like it it's way cheaper than a therapist it sounds like you're trying to help us where's the part where they're like and then i had to drink breast milk right <laughs> yeah and that part never came <laughs> Uh, they were genuinely helping me um, deal with like my fucking attitude, my resentment, and my fucking shitty nature in so many aspects. Damn. It helped me grow up really fast in three days. Wow, that's tight. Uh, yeah, so I signed up for the second classes, the advanced classes. Um, and it's a lot of shit like, let's say you have something to complain about, so you write it down, right? And they partner you up. And then say, read each other's story of when you, that time you were hurt. And then the thing is, they make you do it for like 40 minutes. You have to read that story over and over oh, and over shit. again until you're fucking tired of yourself complaining. No. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah, genius that's cool. because I'm like, God damn, I don't want to hear this shit anymore. Yeah. Especially if it's your own shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I was fucking tired of myself. I was growing the fuck up. Yeah. And so it was came a time for me to share about how I'm growing. And uh, I was talking about how I, uh, you know, was seeing life, you know, back home. Like, I, it was hard to accept that I'm here. I see it as a failure, but now, you know, I want to try to make this work or whatever. And they were like, yeah, why don't you tell us why you're really here? What happened, right? There seems to be something else. You make it noble, like you're, you're helping your mom. That's why you're here, right? Tell us what really happened. And I was like, I tried to kill myself and I started crying. Damn! I started crying in front of, and I saw people shocked and like tearing up. And then the leader took the mic and he goes, well, Ed, we're not that kind of uh, organization. We're not actually a medically licensed or <laughs> <laughs> So um, we're gonna have to take you to the back or we'll give you a full refund, um, wow. but we can't have you stay here anymore. Thank oh, you. Wow. you we'll take a quick it. break. He's like, oh, this guy, he might kill himself. Yo, that's a liability, dude. He might kill himself on our program. Fuck this shit. And let's get this nutcrack out of this fucking shit. Hey, Ed, sorry, man. We're going to give you a full refund. No, you know what? We're going to give you $5,000. Yeah. And you take this money this, and you go. This is why we didn't let anyone talk during Money Masters except for us. Yeah. This is a fucking, all kinds of liability you're taking on. So I sat there in my car like, damn. Even self-help classes don't want to help me. Oh no. <laughs> Damn. Yo, I feel that sucks, wow. but this is so fucking funny, man. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh in my car. For wow. Like, so you want to even continue cool. the ball? I can't, like, no. As soon as I, I got to my car and I'm sitting in silence like, Damn. Your money's not good here. Yeah. We can't help you. Refund. Dude, it. imagine all the people in the room who have had the same thought though, and they're all just like, okay, you gotta button up about that. Yeah, I can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or that's a great way to get a refund. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, honestly, what happened was I had to look at life for exactly. They already taught me that, right? And even these guys are rejecting me. That's hilarious. But the reality was, too, no one's gonna help you, no one's here for you, you know? Like, and I had to find and guide my way through this existence, pretty much. Like, knowing that I have to kind of make these decisions um, the way I want to, to be in control of this shit, mm -hmm. right? So, it's not like I went back. So they actually helped you by throwing you out. 
Because yeah. if you were dependent on them, they could have been much richer. <laughs> yeah. Much, much richer. What if they watch this video and they go, so we did end up helping you, I'm gonna charge you again. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Ed, can I get that money back? Yeah, Sounds like I, a lot of value, pal. Yeah, it can seem like it, it helped you. I mean, it, it brought me towards more of a critical way of thinking. Um, and facing life and a lot of the challenges. This episode is brought to you by audible.com. And you know what's cool about audiobooks? So, you know, I like to work out. I like to get my hands busy, wash a little bit of the dishes, or just regular life movement, right? Yeah. And to read a book, you have to actually like schedule out time to sit down, open it up, and be hella focused. But Sometimes you just want to like hear thoughts as you're still doing other things. And me, I like to like do a lot of projects, right? Yeah. But I have to remind myself why I want to do this. So I have this really good book that I'm on and I'm listening to on Audible called Start With Why. I love that book. And it's a classic by Simon Sinek, right? Yeah. Um, and I can listen to this or read this book multiple times because it's almost like a reset. Like if I'm gonna create a new product, if I'm gonna get into a new business venture, or even like get into creatives and like why I wanna make this film or whatever it is, right? It kind of helps adjust my mind to start it with a great motivation of like why I'm trying to do this in the first place. And is it for the right reasons? And so that's why I just absolutely love like sometimes listening to podcasts or audiobooks because I'm able to still do what I'm gonna do, but like listen as I like double multitask. Yeah, you know what I realized too about myself is I actually learn better from listening. So oh, I've really? Re I've read the book, mm. and I think some for some reason I don't retain the information as well. But mm. when I'm listening, especially with like headphones on, and I'm like jogging or something, I'm, I retain the information so much more because afterwards when I talk to Gio about it, I can actually explain exactly what the whole chapter is about without my mind going blank, like, wait, what is that chapter about? So that's why I really like audiobooks. And the cool thing is, they don't only have audiobooks, okay? They have podcasts, they have live theatrical performances, they have Audible originals, they have so much more content than just audiobooks. Yeah, and if you go to Audible Plus, they have the whole Plus catalog too. So there's an endless amount of content. So if you guys wanna check out audiobooks for your drive, for your commute, for your doing your dishes or your daily uh, errands, go to audible.com slash off the record, or you could text off the record to 500-500, that's visit audible.com slash off the record, or text off the record to 500-500. What do you think changed, yeah, I mean, you gotta give yourself credit, you man, because, I mean, yeah. you know, other, I mean, there could have been like, oh, even they don't want me? Well, I better off myself then, because I'm helpless, right? Yeah. So like, there's so many paths, but you yeah. chose, like, fuck this dude, like, they're not gonna help me, I gotta help myself. They literally rejected you, and you chose to see it as a good thing, which is yeah. great, which is, that you did it though, that, that's mm -hmm. the thing. But, but what would you say, looking back at your old self, is the difference, like, is there some kind of like, what was the perspective shift? If you, is there one thing, is there multiple things, like, like the beef, like the then and now, because you you've had such a drastic change and it's so fresh. Where most people take a long time. Like for me, if I was asked that, like it was, it's so long that I can't identify the change. Right. But yours is like you said, three days. You're a different person. This wow. and that. What was the thing that separated the two? Um, projection. The, that when I hate somebody, and all the things I hate about them definitely just the traits I own. Wow. It's a constant looking in the mirror. Mm. It's constantly it's like pointing. When you cringe at something, is because that's the part that you hate and you see it in other people. Mm -hmm. Damn, yeah. that's next level. That's so fucking next level. I cringe a lot all the time. Me yeah, too, but it's them, that has nothing to do with me. I'll tell you what, there's something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, 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 t I cringe at myself a lot, a lot of the past stuff I've done, right? But then, and so I'll sit by myself and just hate myself, right? Mm. But the other reality of thinking about how much I hate myself is just exponentially how much more I love myself. That's right? true, yeah. When I'm in the car by myself and I'm in my own thoughts, like you say, there's, it's really loud in your brain, right? I'm in the same way. Sometimes I just, just scream, I fucking hate myself, right? And then as soon as I say that, I'd be like, no wait, I love myself! <laughs> just drive down the street. I love myself! It's just it's just as true as how much I hate myself, isn't it? You're really into yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, so 
I had you care too damn much. I care yeah. so much. Yeah. You do yeah, have yeah, the yeah. windows up or down? Oh, up. Okay. I'm sure. He does. <laughs> and he does it with a full car. <laughs> and uh, so David's in there like, yo, shut up, man. No, what the fuck are you doing? So I, I, I saw that like I'm re fucking rejected by people who said they were gonna help me, you know. And I had to look at the saddest part about it. And also the funniest part. Of it is hilarious, awesome. man. That's why we need humor, though. Because, yeah. And, and people try to take it from us so often. But you you chose to find this situation humorous. And <laughs> many people could twist it and go, oh, who are those motherfuckers? Fuck them, all this shit. But it's like you 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 owned this moment. and you Yeah, because you, you, you weren't a victim anymore. Yeah. When you use humor, <clears throat> you own your own story. And so as when I see the pain in my life, like I totally started understanding the that those drama faces where it's sad and crying, it's the same fucking feeling. Oh, right? that's true. I feel pain, and I can cry or be angry or I can fucking laugh. Yeah, it's and two it's, sides of the yeah. same coin. Yeah, yeah, and I can, I can definitely feel everything though. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to feel angry about that pain, and it's also okay to laugh. It's just everything. We all feel it's how is it not okay to laugh, then, mm -hmm. right? So, being able to see that you were just projecting yourself uh, and your negative traits on other people, yeah. right? Um, did that help you identify when you were cringing or like when you were blaming or when you were angry at others? Like, were you able to be like, oh shit, Ed check? Is, and then did you work your way through that? Or I'm constantly now in a place where um, I do review the way I. Um, interact with my relationships towards people because of the way I might say something to them because of the way I might disrespect them with my words kind of thing and in the past I didn't give two shits that's me or whatever but more or less if I'm interacting and I'm going to be around people like why would I make it shitty for them <laughs> where in the past I never gave a fuck you're just like this is who I am take me or leave it we click, we click, if we don't, then that's on you. But even in people who are close proximity yeah. of me, which is a fucking dumb thing to do. Um, and so- Yeah, you'll end up with no friends. And I mean, I'm still having, I still have trouble with my relationships in that matter, but I can go up to him now and say, I'm sorry. I said- So before you couldn't say uh, sorry? I have problems with- Oh, you never lose, motherfucker! Yeah. Dude. Yeah, you killed the I, ego then. Like, He's like, I think a lot of like self-help <laughs> things also kind of identify like, like what you're dealing with, it's like, we have our true self and then we have like the ego self, right? And that ego is always there to kind of not let your truth be heard or, mm -hmm. or, or even known to yourself, right? And you kind of like destroyed it in those three days. And I feel like a lot of people take a lifetime figuring right. that out. Yeah, that, that psychology of that is a hard journey to go through. Well, and it's a journey too, right? It's it not over. Yeah. It's, it sounds like you're still going through this. So. True. All the time it's that I couldn't identify what exactly I needed to do to be a better person. I just knew I'm kind of shitty, right? But I have no idea how to help myself, which is why I just signed up. Somebody help me help me, you know? And uh, what, what about yourself where you're like, I'm kind of shitty? <laughs> uh, I was a major like alcoholic and putting my like pain and hurt through substance abuse um, made me feel a lot of shame on myself too all the time. Um, uh, a lot of the mistakes of my past replay in my head and uh, the traumas of the past too. Oh, so you couldn't let go, Congrats. so you use alcohol to forget? You know, going through that class and looking and reviewing my life, especially when I hit 30, because my dad died when he was 53, you know? And my midlife crisis had happened there which is why I needed a change. Uh, my health, my body, like what I was doing to myself, even how I was thinking. You know, it's not like a three-day transformation, totally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've had a lifetime of experiences to have to come to a point of knowing exactly how to take the steps to reconcile relationships, how to redeem relationships as well. Um, and sustain too. Yeah, ask for forgiveness straight up. Like, you know, and not be ashamed to be like, I'm sorry. You know, and not know anything either. Just be okay with who I am in that matter, that I exist in all of it. I just am. That's tight. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, really tight.
Thank you. Dude, thanks for opening up, dude. That's a... You are very different, though, like, from when I remember. It was just, like, the jolly fat guy to now, like, the, the monk. <laughs> you were the monk. No, yeah. like, and then you weren't, sorry you weren't that too. deep back then. <laughs> like, you, oh, yeah. like, I feel like, uh, you know, the Ed that I remember was, like, the guy that would come around and he would just be a goofball and then... That's it. Like you know, you didn't you didn't have any deeper thoughts. Were you covering up though? I mean, you obviously were deeper than that. Yeah, I mean, because when I was 23, I I uh, traveled a lot around the world to about my life and philosophies, and I uh, became a monk-ish when I studied the fucking Bible hardcore, and I went to Iraq, you know. Um, and lived there for two months. In the land of the Bible? Yeah. What? Where? In uh, Erbil. Wow. And I lived there for two months living with the people. In, in the middle of the war? 2009. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. shit. What made you go there? Well, that's crazy. I was facing this existential crisis in t when I was 23. My life has come to a lot of trauma and a lot of thought. Where? So you thought Iraq would help you? But dude, a lot of people just read <laughs> Perks of Being a Wallflower. They don't go to fucking Iraq. <laughs> I had to figure out if God... Or you could have just gone to Bali like normal people. <laughs> like, yeah. Or fucking, you know, like Laguna be a hipster Beach, and go dude. to Thailand and Fuck try it. to find yourself. Laguna de Gil. <laughs> Laguna de Gil. <laughs> it was a lifetime of learning, dude. And I found Goodbye, it amongst rah. strangers and people like, so I went to Haiti after their earthquake and I, you know, helped did some humanitarian work, um, and and then after, I went to Japan after the tsunami, and I cleaned up after a lot of shit. And like I always learned awesome. something about myself too as I'm out there doing that shit. But as when I come back home to my church, I was rejected by them too. None of them wanted to hear. Why well, you keep getting rejected, bro? Yeah. That's why I say maybe I'm a piece of shit. You're like, I just want to say I helped clean up during Haiti, and they're like, hey, this is not that place. You need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? Wait, so you went back, and how did they reject you? <laughs> they didn't want to hear what happened. They thought I was there on a, like, a vacation to make myself like some holy man to make myself In a better. Rap? Yeah. Wow. And what? I don't know. They, yeah, it's a lot to it. They, they rejected me pretty much, and so I left church and I became an alcoholic. And I moved to LA, and that's how you, who you met, was alcoholic Ed who left the church and not in ever in any kind of deep thought. I just need to get my work done. That's and crazy, yeah. I put everything into work and alcohol. <laughs> and then I just burnt out. And food, huh? And food, yeah. yeah. We 250 like to go eat. pounds. Yeah. And then, yeah, turned 30 and realized I probably have a, I don't have that much long left because my dad died at 53. Yeah. Well, I mean, you probably got more years on you now since you ha you changed your lifestyle. That's Fucking healthy, yeah, yeah. dude. That's why I started fasting yeah, yeah, for yeah. longevity. I I, I do it, took man. away a lot of years, right? Mm -hmm. So I continue to fast. I seldom do this, and we can cut this if you like, but, but do you feel like anyone really knows you? Dan Fisher. He owns Fishbowl. He's my, my best buddy. Yeah. We've yeah. known each other since high school. We went to college together, graduated together, lived together, moved to LA together. Then he got married, and now I'm by myself. So that, so that, is that what it is? Because so you had, you had that, but maybe it's not the same. Oh, definitely. I've constantly been in search for like a, a deep friendship because I hate that surface level shit. You know, because yeah. I don't like playing video games, or yeah. I'm not really actively wanting to go play sports. Kind mm -hmm. of, you know. Um, I. My therapist even told me, I have this understanding complex where people don't understand me and- um, You understand that they don't understand you and you're like, that's okay. Yeah, and I've just lived with, it's okay, you don't have to. What's understand. not to understand, he's fucking easy to understand. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is. I mean, I didn't know you this way because you didn't open up this way. But now it's like, oh yeah, this, I, this is, I get it. Yeah, it's not complicated to know you, I find. Yeah. But, but maybe I understand that you feel like it is, but, but and you're not wrong for you're that. You're surrounded by morons, that's the problem. <laughs> yes. And I can't say that out loud because I feel bad about saying that. Fuck that, dude. I'll say it for you. <laughs> I'll say well, it listen, for I've only gotten to know you today. I find you very interesting. You talked. To, you broke down fucking Christopher Nolan movies in a way I never even heard in my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, dude. Yeah, you're a very interesting dude, so. Yeah, and so I'm working at this store and I just fucking wish that these people who kept calling me a gook and a chink, throwing shit at me, or fucking physically assaulting me, or stealing my shit, or pissing on my yard, don't want to get to know me. They just want to fuck with me. 
Yeah. And so I had a longer year. Fuck those meth show. heads though. Like, yeah, having to deal with this existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm by myself too. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's also a shitty environment that you're in, man. Like you can't thrive in shitty environments. It's, it's yeah. difficult, it's really difficult. And looking for reaching out to people in an environment like that is yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. Like, all, like every person that comes into your store is trying to look for a crack pipe. Yeah. Like you can't make a good, you know, growing friendship there, like the yeah. fuck? And I, I couldn't find it yeah. at all. So like um, a guy I went to high school with lived down the street from my store actually. And he'd come in to, you know, buy some caffeine or what, Red Bull, some shit and leave every day, just small talk. And then he's like, hey, why don't you come over, have a beer sometime, so I do. And then he's like, hey man, if you your family ever needs help, call me, right? And then I got assaulted, some motherfucker, uh, yeah, people just start shit. It's okay, man. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, I called this guy up and that's where he draws a line. What do you mean? He's like, I, I can't help you, but yeah, I can't help you. Dude. It's like, I'm not gonna do I it. hate those tough guys. Yo, I got when, your back. When I shit hits the fan, you, yeah. that, that friend was a little there. bitch. And I was, you know what? I fucking went back to church, the people who rejected me, right? And I go show up back to church, and none of these motherfuckers will help me. Yeah. You know? Which confirms your theory that you're truly alone and nobody will ever. Oh, be yeah. For you. Consistently. Yeah. And this is the first year in, and I was there for four years. Oh, man. Damn. I hate comparing myself to like prisoners, kind mm. of thing, because that's some real shit, you know? Mm. But isolation, I get it. This quarantine pandemic, I've been in, in it Damn. already. I understand it. I've been deep in my brain alone in solitude for a long time. Maybe that's why I'm okay with sharing so much of it. Yeah. Because everyone else out there is also going through this pandemic and thinking thoughts they never thought before because they've been alone. Mm -hmm. So it's, maybe it's not normal, but you're okay. Like other people feel this shit, you know? And you can come out. Okay, and laugh at shit. Yeah. And be okay with it all. Well, yeah. come hang out with us because we love hosting super spreader events. Yeah. <laughs> Bart makes this amazing Wuhan Wagyu. Oh my goodness. It's off the fucking. You will see it tonight. Delicious. You have to try it before you hate on it. Yeah.